Hello. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church, Lansing, Michigan's Ash Wednesday services. We thank you for joining us today. And on behalf of the people, we know that your presence is not only appreciated, but a blessing to us as well. If you are following the service at home on your prayer books, please turn to page 264. And if you are following it on our electronic version, we begin on page one. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be, be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of a finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Psalm is Psalm 103. We'll read it responsibly. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. 
He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children. On those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The epistle lesson is taken from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace, the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found in our, with our ministry but as servants of God, we have com commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them for then you shall have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have their reward. But when you get alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that when your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, 
so that they be so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Today, as the Christian community throughout the world, we gather to celebrate Ash Wednesday. Now, as the Christian community, most of what we do is about celebrating. We talk about celebrating the Eucharist. We celebrate marriages. We celebrate baptisms and confirmation. Every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of Christ. And when we celebrate, we do the normal celebratory things. We gather together as a joyful community. In times outside of the present COVID time, there's always a lot of chatter here in the building. People gather together in the narthex, friends visiting with one another, people who come into church waving hello and saying good morning to their friends who are already seated. We celebrate after every ceremony or after every service by gathering together for coffee hour in the parish hall. Episcopalians love to have coffee hour. It's referred to as the eighth sacrament. We gather together again to talk, to fellowship, to find out what's going on with people's lives, and again and again to enjoy good food. I've never been anywhere in any church where there hasn't been good food. If I think about it here, the two greatest celebrations of the year being Easter and Christmas, there's always something to be had passing back and forth at Christmas time gifts of homemade candies, fudge, bread, all those wonderful things. And on Easter, as on All Saints Sunday, Carrie and her daughter Adrian always put on epic coffee hours to just really add a little more festivity to the people gathered together to celebrate. And so we are not people who worship death, but people who celebrate the resurrection of Christ. But it's not all about celebrating. It is about remembering who we are in the eyes of God. On Good Friday, the faithful gather together in community to grieve, to support one another. And that's what makes today, Ash Wednesday, so very different. For Ash Wednesday is not about the people gathered together. Ash Wednesday is about you and I as individuals looking deep within. Very different. We are a community that celebrates, and yet on this day, we do not focus on community gatherings. We don't focus 
on being one with our brothers and sisters. Rather, we are encouraged to look at ourselves, to make promises, to make amendments, and to truly realize that the season of Lent is the beginning of the time when we prepare to celebrate. But to get to that point of celebration, we have to go through Good Friday. We have to honor the death of our Savior, the one that we gather to celebrate about so often. And so we hear about fasting. We hear about how to dress on Ash Wednesday. Indeed, as you can see, the sanctuary has changed greatly from last Sunday. The banners are gone. The candles have been rearranged. The altar is vested in a Lenten array. We've taken away the flags. All those things that are colorful, all those things that are about celebration. And instead, we have unbleached muslin. We have purple. We strip away all those things so we can focus entirely on what is the most important thing that we do as Christians, and that's gather at God's banquet table, there to receive the strengthening sacrament that carries us through the darkness of the season of Lent. And Lent is supposed to be a non-fun time. We are called as people to study, to pray, to fast, to focus, to focus on what we need to change inside ourselves. Lent has not meant to be easy, and it all begins with Ash Wednesday, with the smudging of ashes upon our forehead to remind us that we are born of the earth and unto the earth we shall return. There's no getting out of it. All of us will one day die and return to the earth. But as our bodies go into the earth, our spirit goes to the throne of God. We are reminded that we can build kingdoms, that we can amass great wealth, that we can do all these things that we call treasures and things that we've earned and things that we desire. But at the very end, it won't matter. Somebody else will inherit them. They will corrupt and go away. We might sometime discover that it's time to pass them on to another generation so that they may enjoy it. Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent is about us focusing on our own death and what we need to do to set ourselves right with God. As I said, it's not easy and it's not intended to be easy. But it is worthwhile because you and I know from personal experience that when we struggle with something and work really hard at it, in the end, we take great pride and sacrifice, great pride and satisfaction in what we have made in our sacrifice. And so this day, I ask you to begin a journey. And that journey is a journey that will carry us through the death and resurrection of our Lord and to focus on ourselves, our relationship with God, what we need to change in our lives, what we need to incorporate in our lives, what we need to give up, perhaps even forever. For we do this out of our love and our service to God. It's our way of preparing to receive the greatest gift of all time, the gift of eternal life, and the true knowledge of how deeply God loves us in each of our flawed lives. A time for us to acknowledge that he welcomes us, he accepts us because he loves us. And it's not something that we can earn it's not something that by dressing right and doing the right things, it's like, check, okay, now they're acceptable in the kingdom of heaven. No, it's about us knowing ourselves truly as needing to cast our whole selves upon God 
and his mercy. And so through this Lenten season, be sure to spend a little more time in prayer. Spend time focusing on what you need to change in your lives. Look for ways in which you can strengthen and draw yourself ever closer to God. When we've done that, very personal, very intimate, something only between ourselves and God, when we've done that, then we will understand even better the joyous celebration of Easter morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this season of Lent, beginning with this Ash Wednesday, a time in which we are reminded of who we are and what our future holds. Help each and every one of us to use this Lenten time carefully and to grow stronger in our relationship with you that we truly understand the joy of your love. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you will please stand. <clears throat> Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal natures, let us now kneel before the, the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, and that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that you are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you at this time to come forward to the table in the crossing and place ashes on your thumb by reaching carefully in the glass jar there and then putting them on your forehead and returning to your seat. Remember that you are dust, 
and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out all my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear the joy of gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. We continue with the Litany for Penitence on page 267 in your prayer books, on page 6 in our electronic bulletin. Together, most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. 
We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, O Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments for uncharitable thought towards our neighbors and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his minister to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made your, made, in your infinite love you made for us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ himself has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Behold, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us join together in the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain upon you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.